Hello everyone, I am in Tashkent waiting for my train to leave. I really don't know which um, way it is, but I will figure out in a minute. Um, yeah, first stop, Kukand. They make you go through many security checkpoints here when you enter the station. It's quite interesting. Look at the flipping hat I just bought. I'm gonna look like Jesse Pinkman. I look like a crackhead. Amazing. Well, apparently yesterday, the lady selling my tickets put me in a business like a wagon or something. This is the best train I've ever been to. And I only paid like 10 bucks. So it is very, very interesting. I wonder how much would uh, an over, you know, an overcast cost, like what, two euros something? I won't complain, this is completely fine. For some reason we have stopped in the middle of nowhere. I think we still have one hour um, to Kokand, but we're gonna be late, 100% sure. Oh, now we're moving. Nice. That's it. I mean, Kokand. There's like a very, very thick fog that doesn't allow me to see like more than 500 meters it was even more dense uh, back in the train but yeah now it's quite better so yeah welcome to the Fergana Valley whoa this place is truly another world holy crap As I said, I just arrived to Kokand. Kokand is one of the greatest cities here in the Fergana Valley. There are four main cities, which are Kokand, Andijan, the city of Fergana itself, and Namangan. And I've chosen this to start because tomorrow, or maybe after two days, we will go to Andijan, which is the easternmost one. In the past, this city used to be, or used to hold its own Khanate, its own independent kingdom that, that extended a very, very large part of this region of Central Asia. Today, it's just a normal city in the middle of the Hergana Valley in Uzbekistan. Okay, something happened. Um, I was crossing the street and some car started honking at me. I didn't know what was that because it was like a normal, you know, zebra crossing. And then an old man came and he started talking to me in Russian, telling me something. And I didn't understand what he was saying. But I don't, I don't think it was friendly. <laughs> he was saying something about the road, uh, I don't know. Okay, just go to my hotel. Oh my God, uh, this, this city is, is, is so weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start. Well, let's first start with the hotel. Today I pay a little bit extra to get this uh, hotel room. Um, I normally pay less. This was like about 18 euros. As I said, I normally pay less, but um, I really needed to rest and I really needed like a strong base here to move around. And yeah, check this out. So you enter here and you have a very nice and wide space with these two chairs, a nice table, my bed, and a very, very nice toilet. And check out the views. Hell yes. 
by the way, apparently the hotel uh, was going to charge me like around 20 euros per night. But because of inflation, apparently I paid less. I paid like 17, so worse for me. I went to buy some food and um, the guy didn't either speak Russian or uh, English. It's very interesting because this Fergana Valley is very rural and while Russian is mainly spoken in the big cities such as such as Tashkent, Almaty, the big capitals, it is true that in the more rural regions they only know Uzbek or the language they, they speak. So for sure not English and not even Russian. So. It was very funny to communicate. Still, he was very eager to, to help me, so yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. It was across this Fergana Valley that uh, the Silk Route went through, and this was a middle point between China and Europe. Of course, trade has always been important in this region and has brought prosperity to its land. Rusko Asiatic Bank. Wow. It is truly, truly cold. Uh, I'm not used to very low temperatures and my hands are especially sensible to cold. And although it's like two degrees, they are very red and it hurts. As I said in my last video, many empires dominated and conquered this region of the world. Of course, the Silk Road was the main reason why they did this. Whoever controlled the, the passage from Europe to Asia would control basically world trade or at least land trade. The Mongols conquered uh, Central Asia, but then when they fell apart and many centuries after, this very region was divided into many different canates or different kingdoms. Towards the 19th century, there were different canates all spread around this part of uh, Central Asia, especially around the, the valleys of the two very important rivers that passed through here, the Amudaria and the Sirdaria, and also the Fergana Valley. In the Fergana Valley, there was a kingdom that was gaining a lot of power, which was the Kokand Canate. I am sorry in advance because uh, <laughs> they don't allow you to take pictures inside. Well, first you have to you have to pay a fee like it's 2.5 euros, but then if you want to take videos, you have to pay 10 euros. So I did not do that, and I tried to sneak some videos. So this canade was quite prosperous and it was doing quite well. The the only problem they had this I'm talking about the 19th century is that there was a lot of competition between other canates, the one in Buhara and some others, which I don't remember the names right now. It was because of the competition and the internal wars between canates that the Russians thought there could be some opportunity for them here. They used these disparities between the different canates to enter and invade the region. The odd number, the soldiers defending Kokand and the other canates, and they managed to conquer the region in a few years. Ever since, Kokand, became just one more city of Russia, first Russian Empire, then the Soviet Union. Under the Soviet Union, the Fergana Valley was heavily industrialized. The Soviet Union saw here a nice opportunity for investing, especially in the cotton industry, because the valley had the characteristics for growing this, uh, this material that uh, was very scarce back in the day. So what they did, they, they designed kind of like a, a way to, to canalize and to divert the Amu Daria and the Sir Daria rivers. However, by doing this, they completely messed up the ecology of Central Asia. They ended up draining the Aral Sea, creating one of the worst environmental catastrophes ever.
the cotton industry gave a lot, a lot of money to this region, to the Valley of Fergana, and still gives, actually. Even regardless of any environmental consequences, uh, Uzbekistan is still using this industry to bring money to the state. Check out the fog. This is incredible, man. Like, I cannot see anything at all. I went to buy some clementines because I've been eating chocolate for the entire day so I wanted to get something healthy into my body the thing is I just had like very big banknotes and I had some small ones but they were enough for buying the three clementines and the guy just you know he was like it's, it's fine don't worry it's just a few cents and uh, although he didn't speak English or Russian either uh, I kinda understood what he was saying and I don't know people here are very nice but there's some, some, some are, some are not, but um, yeah, interesting. The palace of the can should be somewhere there, but you cannot see it because it's, it's so foggy. Oh my God. And it's so cold. Bought myself a pizza because today is the World Cup final. I don't know when you're watching this, but yeah, it's basically the World Cup final and I'm gonna treat myself well. Honestly, what the hell is going on in this valley? It's like cursed or something. Like, I really want to film some content. I really want to, you know, go out to the city, but one, it is extra cold. Two, this fog won't let me see anything and I don't know when it's going to go away. Like. Seriously, this is... this is ridiculous. It's almost midday and the fog is retreating, apparently. I'm gonna try to explore the city. Now it seems to be more lively. There's people on the streets, finally. And, um, yeah. Let's see if I can buy first some gloves and then the train tickets for tomorrow. I've just been to the first shop, they had everything but gloves. Uh, second shop, nothing. I am leaving now the station after buying my tickets. And something very funny has happened. I was trying to explain in Russian to the guy that I want a ticket for tomorrow in the morning and I thought the only train available was at like 12. The guy told me there's one at 6. I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I didn't have the skills to say, no, I prefer the one that lives at 12. I, I didn't even know that, ex that that existed, you know? So the guy printed the, the, the ticket for me and I just, I, just, I just gave him money. He returned the, the, the change. And I just realized he charged me like 90 cents for the ticket to a place which is like 200 kilometers away. So I was, I didn't know what to think about this. So I, I checked the ticket and I saw that there wasn't even a seat assigned. There was nothing at all. So I stopped and I started thinking, you know, maybe this is not the best idea to take this specific train. And, you know, as I was quite shy to tell, to tell him, hey, I, I want a better ticket or I want a proper ticket. Like, I, I don't trust this 90 cents ticket. I just realized you can buy uh, the tickets online. So <laughs> I, I could have saved this, uh, this stroll to the train station with that. But yeah, I just bought a new ticket. It cost me like four euros, which is more acceptable, I guess. Uh, and it seems legit, so, <laughs> oh my God. This is so funny. During the times of the Soviet Union, there were massive deportations. Groups of people that were from the same ethnic group, they were taken to other parts of the Union in order to, in order to work and to reorganize the geopolitical uh, aspect of many different parts of the Union. And Central Asia was not an exception.
I am at the Jami Mosque complex. This massive mosque was built by an order of the Khan. The Khan, as I said, was the leader of the Kokan Khanate, the state that had its capital in this city, Kokan, that's why it's named Kokan's Khanate. This was built in the 19th century. And we have here this amazing tower, which I assume it is a minaret. And then we have all this courtyard with different sections. It is beautiful and very well preserved. I was just walking around and I was about to leave. But then uh, this lady who only speaks Uzbek, she came, she was demanding me to pay. Uh, apparently it's because of this museum, which has only one room and also for going up the minaret. I had to pay like three euros <laughs> apparently, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all right. Uh, I would pay even more. This place is just beautiful. I've been, I've been wanting to come all my life, but um, <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> The lady said I can climb up the minaret, so let's see. Oh my god, the door is so small. Okay. Whoa. Please don't lock me in here, thank you. Okay. I feel I was interrupting a date, but what's worse, I caught on camera how these guys were vandalizing the minaret. They were literally writing something on the walls. By the way, this is the ticket I was talking about. You can see there, Kokan to Andijan, but you cannot see either the uh, the time of the day it departs, nor my seat, you cannot see anything. So yeah, I was left a little bit shocked. And I think I've made the right decision by buying a new one on the internet. I mean, come on, I can sleep three more hours or something. The theater of Kokan. And this is the Museum of the Great Scholars, apparently. Да, много. Спасибо. А? А, это университет Помпеу Павла. А, Кокон. Нет, 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 нет здесь. Я, я... Нет, я... Испания. 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 Да. Я турист здесь. Да. да, только турист, да. Я очень люблю а, узбек культура. Культуру. Да. А? Да, да, много, да. да. Очень, очень интересно. When I told those babushkas that I was Spanish, they were freaking out. They were super happy about that. They were talking between them about Spain. I could understand the word Spain because they were talking in Uzbek. Uh, and then they were following me around the museum, making me questions like, where do you study? What do you study? Uh, they were super nice. They were super nice with me. Uh, my God, it is in these places where you don't have much tourists. It is in these places where you find the kindest people. And oh my God, these babushkas were super fun.
Сколько стоит перчатки? У меня есть Рахмат, рахмат. And this is how you buy gloves in Kokand, Uzbekistan. They cost me about three euros. Uh, there were other pair of gloves, but they were more uh, thin. These ones are literally for Siberia. So yeah, I'm happy with my purchase and now let's go get some food. For some reason, every time you buy something in a shop, you get a packet of, of these, <laughs> of matches. Like why? Goodbye, Kokand. It's been a nice and foggy stay. I am now heading to the train station to get my train to Andijan. to Andijan there were a bunch of people there asking me if I wanted to go to the border so I am in the right place I will go to the border tomorrow but for now I want to stay one night in Andijan see when the Soviet Union collapsed Fergana Valley was left entirely to the uh, to the Uzbekistan Republic um, there were some parts in the edges that uh, went to other countries such as Kyrgyzstan but most of it went to Uzbekistan causing a lot of trouble indeed This is my room for tonight. I have three beds here, which are all for me. Uh, this is a hostel actually, and it cost me like around 9.5 euros. Uh, I don't have a private bathroom, but that's completely okay because I only stay in for one night. And probably the coolest part of this is that I am literally next to a bazaar. All right, now it's time to talk about something quite dark. I will now display some footage from a square you will see. Uh, in this square, something very, very bad happened about 17 years ago. In 2005, there were big, big protests against the uh, government of, uh, of Uzbekistan for putting into jail some businessmen who were apparently innocent and they were charged of, of conspiring against the, the government or of, you know, radical Islam or something like that. There were riots, they tried to, people tried to break into the, into the cells, they tried to liberate them. They actually did, they actually liberated them. Um, but then the, the, the protests continue on for, you know, against the government uh, in, in that square in Andijan. And in one day, a lot of people gathered there. Uh, the protests were being peaceful, but uh, all of a sudden the Uzbek police opened fire and killed a lot of people. Um, there are many versions. Uh, the Uzbek uh, government says it wasn't more than 100. Someone who was working for the police and then changed sides said that more than 1,000 people were killed in total. It doesn't matter how many, it's just, it was horrible. It was a massacre. It's called the massacre of Andijan. The government says uh, they did this because uh, there were a lot of radical and Islamic extremists between those that were protesting. The government of Uzbekistan has always been very, very scared of uh, what was going on in, in Afghanistan. They wanted to, you know, to have the, the control over the country and they didn't want radical Islam to spread. However, these, you know, this witch hunt became very, very aggressive and things like this 
happened and it was only 17 years ago. Uh, probably a lot of people that are here at the Bazaar had some relative that died in that massacre. In fact, there was a time where you couldn't grow a beard in uh, Uzbekistan because it was associated with this kind of like branch of, uh, of the, the radical Islam. Back in the streets of Andijan, so far the city is better than Kokand, at least it's more lively. There's less things to do. Uh, apparently the only things I, you, can, you can see, they are quite far from here, so I won't be going. Um, but so far, yeah, it's more lively. Now I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to, to arrange my transportation for tomorrow. I'm going to try to cross the border to Kyrgyzstan. It's not easy traveling around here. As you can see, the fog is still here. Really, I think I'm living in like a simulation where I'm inside Silent Hill. This is really creepy, to be fair. Well, guys, yes, we have a bus. It's gonna be like one euro and a half to cross the border. That's gonna be nuts. Check out this mall. I wasn't expecting this in Uzbekistan and especially not in Nandijan and in the Fergana Valley. Check it out. Well, I wasn't expecting this side of Andijan. What the hell was that? I don't know. That was it for today. Now I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna sleep because tomorrow I have to wake up very early to catch my bus to the border. See you soon.